problem. They can escape to the lake. I will put the fences. Scientists agree that nearly one fifth of the world's land is threatened with desertification. Are we really turning our planet into a dust bowl? In Alentejo, the heart and soul of rural Portugal, farmers are bracing for an environmental crisis. Summers are getting hotter and wildfires are becoming the norm. So what's being done about it? This is Left Wild. We are here on a quinta, regenerative farm and uh, co-living for people. I always was dreaming as a kid uh, to uh, more or less regenerate a piece of land. And yeah, that stayed always in my life. I ended up in Portugal after a life in the city in Northern Europe and a 130 hectare farm in the south of Portugal. That is an area that is moving towards desert. Slowly but surely it's uh, going in that direction. I just found it a really hopeful mission. Instead of uh, degenerating, so regenerating. Just how did Ferry find himself in the middle of rural Portugal with a big dream and an even bigger fixer-upper? Inspired by childhood memories of seeing deforestation on TV, Ferry decided he wanted to do something about it. So eight years ago, he left the Netherlands and his job as lab engineer to turn over a new leaf down south. It was a difficult time for Portugal, with lots of wildfires spreading all over the country. Here we can see the basic principles at work and how we create a fertile soil. Um, actually, we should also go to another field in the area and see how it looks there. Completely bare. 130 hectares of majestic plains, native cork forests and citrus tree groves and a magnet for anyone who loves wild nature, van life or a deep need to escape the grind. You could be forgiven for thinking this is a retreat aimed at Westerners going through a midlife crisis. But according to Ferry, the farm is as much an experiment in communal living as it is in working with the land. Integrating livestock, restoring native vegetation and building community resilience is a huge undertaking. We started permaculture. Now we see really nice things happening in the regenerative agriculture area all over the world. And uh, yeah, now we are here at a point uh, where we, uh, yeah, we can start more or less a professional regenerative farm. Imagine a few months ago, the vegetation was this high. And then simply we just sent in um, a flock of sheep. It's very dense for one day or maybe half a day. And they have trampled the grass. Everything was more like this. And imagine where we are also now. We are uh, in the middle of, of the summer. That means it hasn't rained for, for a few months. And you see this green coming back here. Really, our soil is uh, alive. The last 10 years also attracted uh, a lot of people who got, got really inspired by what we do. They just enjoy the, the vibe of nature that is still here. And so Akinta is uh, also a co-living space for people where people can have a job do something here that landing in themselves process so i arrived uh, about three weeks ago at the farm then uh, when i arrived i was really surprised about the environment here the the atmosphere about the farm itself it's really a wide area and in th those three weeks i learned quite a lot especially talking about construction and maintenance. So, for example, we built a compost toilet. We made, together with a team, a shower, outdoor shower. And at the moment, we are building an outdoor kitchen. All right. 
besides farming, we did a lot of eco uh, construction. Yeah, you have a small eco team where we uh, maintain the land with, and people like to help also sometimes. And we have a garden here going on, so people help there too. Me and my girlfriend, we were able to place our camper van in a really nice natural area. And every day you could walk around the farm. You can just take a walk for 30 minutes or you can take a walk for one and a half hour. Yeah, this place is really inspirational. Regenerating the land with animals is very, very effective. In terms of uh, building healthy soil again, the animals need food, they need grazing material. And also this way of working, you just produce a massive amount uh, of forage for them. So uh, that's what we try to do. Ferry's ambitious project in the fight against wildfires involves an unexpected ally, the Dorper desert sheep. Genetically closer to goats, these tough, disease-resistant sheep populate the mountains of South Africa. They were bred by the South African Department of Agriculture in the 1930s to survive in arid conditions and feed on the undergrowth that fuels fires. And Ferry is betting big on these hardy animals, which currently can fetch up to 500 euros each. Problem, they can escape to the lake. I will put the fences. He's breeding the sheep as part of a holistic land management strategy that's as smart as it is sustainable. There seems to be a way here. The sheep made a way. By munching on dry flammable plants, they're like nature's firefighters, reducing the risk of wildfires breaking out by creating what are called fire breaks. Their grazing habits also help aerate the soil, improve water retention, and encourage native plants to stage a comeback. In areas where it doesn't rain so much, what is really important is um, the rain you capture. So it doesn't matter how much it rains, how much rain are you able to, to hold in your soil. You can imagine that if you have a sponge layer like this and the soil under here is alive, when the first rain comes, we catch everything. So you can also imagine if it's just like compacted dead soil, when the rain comes, it right away goes away. All over the world, there's an enormous carbon uh, CO2 uh, sequestering potential. Another very important principle is that we just leave it alone. We leave it to rest. We just disturb one or two times a year and for the rest, it will rest. The goal is to apply this principle over the whole farm and to create these kind of conditions over the whole farm. So there will be a, a lot of healthy, diverse fodder for all the animals. We, we also don't want to eat potatoes every day. These days farm animals, they get quite uh, the same. They all eat soya or they all eat this one thing. And it's so great to have for your animals all this type of plants. And, and they love it and they enjoy it. Here we go. Ten, I missed ten. We run several courses here. The permaculture courses are quite popular together with the MBC, so natural building courses. It normally has a system of boards just for a flat surface, insulation, which you can use a natural one. Sometimes community courses, how can we train ourselves to, to communicate better, communicate more clearly. You never can learn enough uh, on those topics. People come here, the first thing I mostly hear of them is, oh, this is so beautiful and it feels so good. Did you experience that as well? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Hey, you see, <laughs> you see, and the other ones are there. <laughs> According to Ferry, the future of this land is brighter than it's been in a long time. But the journey is far from over. With regenerative agriculture and a little help from these scrappy sheep, the land is slowly but surely being rewilded and restored. 
It's a reminder that, in a world obsessed with quick fixes and instant gratification, real change takes time, patience, and a little bit of elbow grease. It's all good. Thanks for tagging along on this journey with Left Wild. If you like this story of hope and regeneration from Alentejo, subscribe to our channel, hit the like, and maybe even drop us a comment. Let's rewild this world together, one project at a time.